Hey there, I'm Jamie New, the founder of Smartest You, and in today's video, you're going to learn how to draft a tour routing before booking a tour. I'm going to talk about how to start finding venues, booking around festivals, talk about demographics, Google Maps, making your routing time and cost efficient, and a whole bunch more. And when you're done watching this video, make sure you check out the description to download your free artist management startup kit, which comes with 10 free guides and templates. Okay, so tip number one is to check similar artist tour routings. As you'll hear me say a lot, don't try to reinvent the wheel because other artists have done what you're trying to do. So make a list of artists and bands that have around the same amount of, fa uh, same amount of fans as you or, or maybe a few steps ahead of you, artists that perhaps have the same vibe as you or similar sound to you. And if you can't think of any, get doing your research because you should always be aware of your competition as we kind of call it. Um, and once you know who they are, find out where they've toured recently. I would usually start by looking at their Facebook page or website because they'll either have a graphic with dates and venues and cities listed, or they'll have a button that says tour dates, which is usually connected to a Bands in Town account. And if you're having trouble finding anything on Facebook, try going directly to bandsintown.com and then you can type in the artist's name or even just the city or the show or the venue. Um, this is super helpful and will help you get names of festivals they also uh, festivals they perform as well. Tip number two, is, speaking of festivals, is to try and route around a festival. If you're looking to book a tour outside of your market or especially in another country, a good idea is to route a mini tour around an important showcase or festival that you've been booked to play. So instead of driving or flying all the way to the festival, just perform just to perform that one show, you wanna make it financially worthwhile. So book shows around it. Just make sure that they don't have a radius clause and if they do, then book outside or around that radius clause. Tip number three is to check your analytics for demographics. I know some people just book shows based on venue availability or the standard tour writing that everyone does, but I'm huge into stats and I think everyone should be. So usually after I've got a basic tour writing written down, after discovering the venues and the cities that they're in, I'll also write down next to those venues how many fans we have on our online platforms in those areas. Not only is this good for negotiating with the buyer, which is something I point out in an, uh, another video, how to write an email to book a show, um, and I've linked to it below for you, um, but it also helps manage your expectations of audience turnout, and then you can market better to your fans in those areas. If you don't have any online fans in certain areas, that's totally fine because either way, you're not just performing for existing fans, you're also performing to gain new fans. So to go get these demographics, head on over to your Facebook page and click on the insights button if you've never done that or go to your Spotify artist page if you've never done that. Turn your Instagram into a business account if you haven't yet, monitor the demographics on there. Set up Google Analytics if you haven't yet, which you should. Um, if you use MailChimp or an email marketing provider, which you also should be, head over there and export your mailing list data and look for the cities your subscribers are based. And here's an extra bonus tip for you. On the topic of mailing lists, you should also have an email signup sheet printed out and placed on your merch table at your shows and label each piece of paper with the venue and city that you collected those names in. And then when you go to upload those emails to your email service provider, tag them with um, that city or put them in a group or segment or whatever. And then that way, when you're in that city again, you can target those people specifically. Bingo. Tip number four is Google map the distance between the venues. So the last thing you wanna do is go uh, book back-to-back -back shows and then realize it takes 18 hours to get from one venue to the next. So once you've got your drafted uh, venue and city list, hop on Google Maps and search directions from one venue to the next or one city to the next. Then write this down next to your routing. Um, make sure you leave enough time in between each tour stop for bathroom breaks, gas station stops, hotel check-ins, for sound checks and load-ins, and for any radio or media visits that you might expect to have that day. So for example, let's say you have a show on Thursday in one city and it ends at midnight. So you get a hotel or you sleep in the van and the next show is five hours away. So you're gonna wanna get on the road by maybe nine o'clock to arrive by two with a stop or two. Hopefully get early check-in at the hotel, make it to sound check for four, and then eat dinner and get ready to perform your Friday night show. 
Obviously, this is just an example, but you get my point. But then, what if you're going east or west and there are time changes, which is tip number five, account for time changes. Find out the time zone of the cities, add the loss or gain in hours to your distance between cities, and then add that to your routing. Between the distances and the time changes, you may need to add driving days to your routing, which are days without shows and therefore days without income. Which brings me to my next point. Tip number six, make your routing as efficient and time efficient and cost efficient as possible. Book as many shows as you can back to back without burning out. So if you can book five shows a week, that's pretty great. The more shows you book per week, the more likely you are to break even or maybe even come out with some positive cash flow. But you've also got to include breaks for vocals and driving time. So to help with that, pop back into Google Maps and make sure you're not backtracking or driving back and forth. Sometimes this is hard to avoid. And again, depending on the availability and the general landscape of the earth, but try your best to make it a clean, forward moving route and not zigzagging back and forth because it will, save, it will save you time and money on gas and accommodations. Literally draw the lines out on a printed map or use Google Maps to see where you're going. Tip number seven is to book six months ahead. Your routing will ultimately depend on the availability of the venues, so the sooner in advance you book, the better chances you have of getting what you want. If you're booking venues between 50 and 500 capacity, you'll want to start reaching out anywhere from two to six months in advance. Two months is kind of pushing it, and some venues won't even talk to you if you're contacting them less than three months in advance. So to be on the safe side, I've started aiming for just six months. And then, for anything over 500 capacity, you definitely want to book more than six months ahead, uh, some even a year ahead. Um, as always, there are always exceptions. You may be able to get added to someone else's show lineup last minute, or they may have a cancellation last minute, or it may be a small coffee shop that doesn't have a full calendar. But either way, if they don't have the date you want, just ask for surrounding dates that are available and reroute as you get offers. So there are your seven tips to routing a tour. If you liked this video, click the thumbs up button, comment with your thoughts or questions, share it with your fellow music industry friends, subscribe, and thank you very much for watching.